for the seventh year in a row. Get ready for the action. Get ready for the thrills and everything you can imagine in the world of aviation and beyond from the greatest air show in the world. It's Airside TV's coverage of EAA Air Venture 2009. Airside uh, viewer uh, with us at uh, Airside TV. We're today in the cockpit of the new C5M Galaxy by the United States Air Force, and I'm currently with Lieutenant Colonel Mike Sibel, who's going to uh, walk us through the aircraft and give us a little bit of information about the mission of the aircraft. Lieutenant Colonel, pleasure. Thank you for uh, spending a few moments with us. Sir. Thank you very Appreciate much. It. Welcome. Uh, sir, this is, our, this is one of the newest aircraft coming into inventory for the Air Force, is that correct? That's with the new modification, that is correct. Okay, and right now you currently have three in testing? Three in testing, that's okay. correct. Could you give us a little overview of the new C5M and its mission or what we're looking to accomplish with it? Sure. Uh, we started off with the avionics modernization program, which you see behind me, okay. which is a glass cockpit. Uh, right now we have displayed from Oshkosh to Minneapolis, and you can see the runways we're going to take off and how to get there. Think I can get a lift home? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. But uh, so basically, it's like taking the uh, from a map in your car mm -hmm. to the GPS in your car, and that's we get a top-down view of everything. We can put any of these screens on on any uh, different screens. Mm -hmm. The other, the second half is, as you can see, the engine screen. We have four new engines, CF6 engines on the aircraft. They produce 22% more thrust. They are extremely reliable. So the cost savings comes from comes twofold. The first one is reliability of the, aircraft, uh, of the engines, which allows the C5B engines are taken off the wing approximately any, every 2,000 to 2,200 hours to, in layman's terms, to be rebuilt. These engines will stay on the aircraft well over 10,000 hours before they require an overhaul. So that savings alone is saving uh, multiple millions of dollars. The increased thrust allows us to take off with heavier weights on shorter runways with more fuel and more cargo and we can go farther. Okay. So what that allows is it allows us to overfly en route destinations. So if we can cut 400 miles off of one of our, uh, our flights and a significant amount of crew rest hours, we can save uh, over 10,000 pounds of fuel on one leg alone. Overseas. Well, that's a good question. When you do those uh, long duration flights, is there generally one flight crew, two flight crews on missions, or we have we have one flight crew okay. with uh, three pilots, two flight engineers, and three load masters makes up an augmented crew. We can do up to a 24 hour day with okay. that crew complement. Now, when you guys came in yesterday, was that a standard landing? Was it a short landing when you came into Oshkosh yesterday? A uh, standard landing. Okay. Uh, and we got off at this taxiway. So uh, the C5 has 24 NX skid brakes. Uh, even the A's and B's have 24 inch skid brakes, and we do have the capability for short field takeoffs and landings. So we land in a very short distance with that type of braking system. What's the uh, estimated time of bringing on? Because you're retrofitting the older C5s to to the upgraded C5M, correct? Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's correct. The, the that's correct. Uh, what's the kind of target goal that you know we're you know as the Air Force looking to uh, bring these online? We have currently 56 planes that have been modernized with the new avionics. Okay. We have three C5Ms, and we're still we're about ready to start operational tests and evaluation in one October uh, with with us the line crews. And uh, in the beginning, it's going to be one every 11 months, and they program that to be one every eight months, up to 52 aircraft. Okay. Um, and that's as the main that's as uh, at the facility as they get to build the airplanes, they get better and better at it, and that's actually programmed by the engineers into the schedule. So that's how finely tuned uh, they have the production process down. So these are test aircraft, okay. and these will enter the operational inventory, and our first production aircraft enters, uh, enters modification next month. Okay. Now, I noticed, uh, what's your, uh, as a pilot, which other aircraft have you flown since you've been in the service? I have flown T-37s, T-38s, and C-21s in addition to C-5A, B, and M. Okay, so you hadn't been up. So the pilot transitioning in to fly uh, the new C-5s, are they coming from like the C-130 community or, a, or 
right now we're still have an operational initial cadre, what we call our initial cadre okay. troops. When we're going to start training line crew members in January 11, and they they will be in the beginning they will come from the C5B fleet, okay. and then as we go through that process, we'll start bringing in uh, pilots from undergraduate pilot training and cross line from other airframes, and we're developing those training programs as we go on now. Now, if I'm not mistaken, isn't there one squad? Or I believe there's a squad, and it's also a reserve squadron that's yes. flying the C5. Yes, I'm in the reserves, as a matter of fact. Okay, and then so there'll be an active duty unit, I'm yes, correct, sir. and then the reserve unit. Mm -hmm. We have we have uh, two units at Dover. Okay. Uh, our 9th Airlift Squadron is our active duty counterpart, and the 709th Airlift Squadron, which I'm a member of, is our reserve counterpart. Um, we are both involved in the initial cadre and operational test. This whole crew is intermixed between active duty and reserves. We okay. do that on a consistent basis. That's Every the flight total is total force. Uh, total, okay. total force concept, and it brings uh, it brings experience from the active from the active duty. For example, I'm a Northwest Airlines pilot uh, okay. for my civilian job. We have United pilot, American, Delta. So as we develop uh, procedures for the aircraft, we get to work with our active duty counterparts and mix all of that experience to come out with the best operational procedures we can. And it's been a fantastic relationship between us and the active duty. Uh, it couldn't be any better. But too, as you see, there's plenty, it's a lot of room up here for the crew to sit here and, and work and do their mission. And I gotta be honest with you, it seems pretty comfortable. So when you guys are probably flying those long duration flights, comfort must mean something to you. It means a lot to us and these seats are, are very, very good. We can adjust them, especially for an air refueling. Mm -hmm. um, our in air refuel tube is right here. Okay. So we get 20 feet behind another aircraft and they insert uh, the boom right in, right back here. And that goes with this fuel panel. You were talking about other parts of the airplane. 12 individual fuel tanks all in the wings hold a total of 332,500 pounds of fuel. Uh, the engineer panel is broken up into the auxiliary power unit, which is right here. And then you have the bleed air systems, which provide pressurization and air to the aircraft. This is also pressurization. Anything in brown is electrics. And then this is our, our, our kneeling uh, panel. As you can see, the aircraft is kneeled, which means we have to lower the aircraft to open the doors and to drive up capability. So we can drive up anything from Patriot missile batteries to MRAPs to tanks to Humvees, uh, all sorts of different equipment that we that to serve the troops downrange. As I said, this is the fuel panel, 12 different uh, fuel tanks, and this is all the hydraulics. We have four separate hydraulic systems uh, on the aircraft, one, two, three, and four associated with the engines. Okay. And then our computer here is electronic EDS. Uh, it's electronic diagnostic system. This is new to the end model. Okay. This helps again in the maintainability of the aircraft. Uh, one of our best examples is uh, we have 24 NSK tires. In the old days, we used to have a problem with the NSK detection system. Mm -hmm. They would have to pull off 24 hubs <laughs> to see which one went bad. So a with lot of this, maintenance hours. A lot of maintenance hours. This will knock it down to one pair of brakes, and they only have to pull off two to diagnose the problem. And that's just one example of what the EDS gives us uh, with the new aircraft. And, that, and with that, that's, that's helping with operational time. Uh, Absolutely. Flight maintenance time and to get these birds up and running when we need them. The faster we can get these planes turned, it, it creates it, a virtual aircraft is what I like to call okay. it. If we can overfly en route destinations and cut out 17 hour crew rest stop and get the airplane back a day earlier, that means we can load the cargo back on and get it downrange. If we can fix the airplane, which would have normally taken six hours, and fix it in an hour, You've just caught five five hours off of the maintenance, which allows us to get the cargo again downrange, and that's critical. Is getting that, especially the MRAPs, was a big mission we did. Mm -hmm. We get that there a day sooner. That means one of our young troops gets that piece, critical piece of equipment a day earlier, which could be which could be very important. Exactly. Take a look outside, and you can get an idea of how high you are on the aircraft. Yeah.